Hey there everybody, my name is Artifacts and today we are getting into some Falkhorn territory. So, if you like that patch, and if you want to learn how to make the patch, then please follow along with this tutorial. But first, you can get this patch by going to my Patreon account. And if you want to help support me in doing more tutorials and doing more live streams, then you can pledge some of your hard-earned money on my Patreon page and get something back in return for it. So check out my Patreon page. I'll link it in the description of this video and in the top of the screen right now. So for this patch, I am going to be showing you the notes first. I'm just playing two notes, which is an F and an F sharp. So we've got F going up into F sharp and then going back down into F. Same thing here. And then there's a little pitch bend on this as well. So if I open up the pitch bend, you can see that. So you can see right here, we're going up in pitch on this second note right here on that F. And then we're bending down in pitch here and doing the same upwards motion here but then instead of going up really fast and then down we're going really slowly up and then it goes back down at the end so that's it for that and let's open up vital and see how this patch was actually made so i'm starting off with this waveform, waveform right here called pulse width and i brought the wavetable position up just a tiny little bit now this oscillator has three voices with only two percent of detuning so just a very tiny amount of detune and as you can see right here at the bottom i've also brought the spread down quite a bit so i think about 10 30 something like that um, it's down quite a bit it's at uh, 37 percent and what that does it makes the whole sound more mono now there's also a macro movement on the level here and that is sort of like creating the main movement on this foghorn bass so if i open up the automation for that macro so this is the automation for that macro and what it does it you can see what it does right so let me just play it And now we can hear that pitch bend as well. Now the pitch bend range is one semitone, so it's only one semitone and that's how we get sort of like we can see that we have this note here, this F note, and then it bends up again one semitone. So it bends back up to that F, F sharp and then it goes down again during the duration of this note going back down towards F. So we're basically going from F to F sharp back down to F and then it bends up back to F sharp and then back to F. So we're basically just switching back and forth between those two notes. <laughs> So that's it for that. And that is then being FN by Oscillator 3. So I think I'll introduce Oscillator 3 first. This Oscillator level is all the way down because I don't want to hear this one. I only want to FN this Oscillator with Oscillator 3. So on this one, I've picked the harmonic series and I've set the wavetable position to about 137. And that one is basically set so that we get this shape. You can see if I move this around, you get sort of like different shapes and just move it toward where it's there. So all the sine waves are at the same sort of like level. And now what this does, so this is without the FM. And then this is with the FM. So it becomes pretty harsh, um, pretty loud as well, but we already can kind of hear that sort of like foghorn type of tone in the bass now. So we can emphasize that by running it through a filter. So I've chosen a 24 dB per octave dirty low pass filter for this one. And I think the, yeah, so I'm using macro one to control the position of that low pass filter so now we get this and you can hear with that macro automation we have that faster bit here you can hear that happening as well so we get that little extra wop wow thing at the start of this second or third note actually i should say so that's that 
And then I also wanted to key track this one. Now, you don't really notice it right now because we're not really using any notes on like a higher octave or anything like that. But if you would go up to like an octave higher, I would like it if this filter opens up a little bit more. Now, I could use the key tracking here. That is perfectly fine, but you then you will have to set the cutoff position to a different value. So I used a note value instead. So what I did is I have the note value assigned to two things. Now this is not really important for this uh, tutorial, but let me just turn it on. So that's the note value on that. So you can hear it a little bit. It opens up a little bit more on that higher F sharp note. And if we go into the matrix, you can also see what I've done. So I basically make sure that the low note is right here, that I've set the point right where that low note is in terms of pitch and then it goes up to that higher note and you can see right here you can see that point move when it goes up to the F sharp note so it opens up that low pass filter a little bit more but if we would go to up to let's say an octave higher see we get that so we still get sort of like some harmonics when we go up in pitch even though the filter like without this if I bypass this then you can hear what happens so we get this and then See, we don't really get any higher frequencies on those notes because the filter stays all the way down. So by adding that note modulator, we can use octave jumps and still get frequencies coming through the filter. So that's that. Um, then I decided I needed some extra sub, so I added this second oscillator and this is just the basic shapes i use the vocode mode here so normally basic shapes is just going to be a sine wave right so that's just your regular sine wave and um i've then went into here and selected the vocode mode and brought this knob up a little bit and you can see what happens it kind of creates a rounded square wave shape but not exactly because it's different from this particular waveform see this one has sort of like almost a square rounded square kind of shape and then the one that I made by doing this has a little dip in here and it's very subtle but it does sort of like changes the harmonics of the sub so by doing this we have some more sub now And that sub is pretty much consistent, There's uh, the level is all the way up. If you want the level to follow along with this oscillator, just assign that same macro knob to the level of this one. But I figured the level of the sub would have to be there, um, so I just left it at a full volume. So we just get a nice amount of sub. Now this one is sent directly to the output, so, so it's bypassing the filter and the effects. And then I went into here, brought the phases of all the oscillators down to zero, and the random phases also all the way down. So when we re-trigger a note, because this is a bass sound, we want it to sound the same every time we re-trigger a note, and by bringing the random phase down, we can make sure it does that. So on filter two, I'm using the phaser positive one. So all the way at the bottom, phaser, positive and I've routed filter one into this phaser so without any movement we get this so you can already hear like this is without and this is with we suddenly get a lot more higher frequencies now I brought this one up from the middle here so that it's a slightly different shape as you can see So it just adds some more higher frequencies, and I'm also using that drive a lot, so we're really driving this phaser, um, getting some more distortion out of that. Then, I have a macro knob, so macro number one, with that automation that I showed you earlier, is also controlling the phaser position, so we get this. Just some subtle extra movement on that phaser. Now, let's go into the effects. First effect is a chorus. This one... Um, no modulation happening on this one. It's just uh, set to a 16 over 1 frequency, so very slow, with 8 voices. Now remember, this 
chorus is not applied to the sub bass because the sub bass is sent directly to the output of the synth using this menu right here. Instead of sending it to filter one, I'm sending this directly to the output so it bypasses the effects. That's why the chorus is only applied to this oscillator that we hear and not this one. I brought the mix of the chorus down a little bit so that we have both the dry signal and the chorus together. This also makes the chorus feel a lot wider as well, which I think is very nice to have. Then I added a low pass filter, an analog 24 dB per octave filter on, yeah, just on the analog mode. I added macro number one to that to give the same movement that we already had with this macro. And then I decided to also add this note modulator to it. And I've sort of like changed the graph here. It's slightly different than the other one. So that again, this is for those higher frequencies when we go up to a higher pitch, if we would want to do that. I'm not doing that in this example, but that's what this is for. So just making sure that I'm doing the same thing as what I did on this one with the note modulator, doing that on the other one as well, because otherwise it would not make sense to have this happening here because it wouldn't really make much of a difference. So now we can sort of like have that same effect going on here. Then I have a distortion because as you can hear, we've lost a lot of the sound, right? We went from this to this. So we lost a lot of the sound that we actually already created. So that's where the distortion comes in. So I have this distortion right here on soft clip mode. Drive is almost all the way up and the mix, mix is all the way up as well. And then we get this. So that's where the grit is coming from. That's where the heavy distortion is coming from that you hear on a lot of, for instance, Foghorn basses. But in this case, I've used the soft clip distortion mode to create that effect. Then I have this EQ. Now this EQ, let me check if there's any modulation on it. No, there's no modulation happening on this. So this EQ is just ducking down the high frequencies and the mid frequencies a little bit. So that does that. And then I have a reverb here. And that reverb is just taking out some of the low frequencies. Maybe we'll do a little bit more so that we get rid of some more of the low frequencies. And then we are mixing this in with just a little bit. So let's say 50%. But that's quite a bit of reverb. Actually, that's way too much reverb and what I want is I want that reverb to happen when the macro knob closes down so when the macro knob, macro knob goes down and the foghorn harmonics go away that's when I want to hear the reverb but when this macro is all the way up I don't want to hear the reverb that much so what I did is I assigned macro one with a negative range on the mix here so if you turn it back on and I hover over it, you can see that I brought it down with a negative value. You can see that on the knob right here. And you can see that it goes down to about 30% maybe on the mix. And that gets rid of a lot of that reverb. And now we get this. So that's how I made this uh, Falkhorn. I hope you liked it. And if you want to have this patch, then please go to my Patreon and pledge some of your money. It would mean a lot and it would really help me out for sure to keep this stuff going. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. I'm going to be back on Friday with a live stream. So if you want to see me make drum and bass live, then tune in on Friday at 8.30 p.m. Amsterdam time. Check out what that is for your time zone and I would love to see you there. Join my Discord server, link is in the description below this video, plus links to my merchandise store and all of that. If you become a Patreon supporter, you will also get 10% discount for that same merchandise store, by the way. So that was it for this tutorial, and I hope to see you guys back soon. Peace.